I'm Ashley Emerson with Kentucky Opera. This is my journey to learn about different creatives, artisans, and athletes in Kentucky. Join me as we all compare creative notes and figure out where their art and skill intersect with the art and skill of singing opera. This is Hoops and High Notes. So I am here at the Louisville Slugger Museum with Bailey Masick, who is a font of knowledge about the Louisville Slugger Company, the bat, and kind of its place in the history of baseball. Thanks for talking with me, Bailey. Of course, thanks for being here. Why do you think Louisville Slugger has been around for so long, has been so successful? What, it, what is the X factor for, for Louisville Slugger that, that makes it such a giant in, in the field of baseball? So there are a few things that we're really proud of. Yeah. The first is that we've been a family company mm -hmm. since the mid 1800s. So that I think is remarkable. Yes. Another important factor is that we've always been a local company. We've always been in the Louisville area. We were over in Indiana for a period mm -hmm. before moving back downtown, but we've always maintained local roots. Yeah. And then we've also always listened to what the players want and need. That's again why there are so many different types of models mm -hmm. and now like so many different like paint finishes that players can choose from. Oh yeah. We've always listened to what the players want and need. That's beautiful and I that Louisville Slugger has stayed literally with within this small area and and been so successful is I think is such a testament to to listening and to staying true to the origins of your art form. Are there certain types of types of wood or material that a Louisville Slugger or a Major League Baseball bat must be made of? So there have been a lot of experimental woods through the years. Mm -hmm. Hickory used to be really popular. Today, ash is the most popular, um, and then maple and birch are okay. also popular. So this is really interesting that there have been trends throughout the decades as to what uh, what players like to play with, and I would uh, it, it, in terms of what they want to use for their bat, because in it, there are similar, I think, trend you know trends and ebbs and flows in music in what the audience is enjoying hearing in terms of style from singers and also what the singers uh, are are really connecting with and enjoying doing at that time you know trends are going to ebb and flow just like just like in in sports and and as the art form you know of of baseball and of crafting a bat continues to evolve this is what I would say is maybe the shape that a lot of people first think of when they of think of a baseball yeah. bat. It has, um, I would say, a pretty well-defined handle from barrel. Okay. It has this nice knob nah. that's not too big, not too small, in okay. my opinion. And it is the A99. Okay. And it was created by Hank Aaron. And then when we compare that okay. to, this is one of my favorite models because this was Roberto Clemente's favorite model. It wasn't the one that he created, but okay. this is the one he mostly used. They each have their own kind of fingerprint. I mean, this could be two different, if these were two different singers singing next to each other, you can tell by looking at this that there would be a different sound that would come out of them. So there's gonna be a different, Kind of, I'm guessing they're slightly different weights. Yeah, I would say the U1 is a little heavier. Yeah. Or at least the balance is different of weight. This is magic. Wow. So cool. Thank you so much, Of Bailey. course. Thank you. So fascinating.